Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It is June the 1st today, which means that my trees in the greenhouse have been outside for a month. The plant room here gets great light all winter long, but then as winter starts to end, the sun gets higher in the sky and I get very little light coming in the south facing windows. There's a risk of frost right until the end of May, so June is the earliest I can bring my tropical trees and put them outside. So the last month of May, the plant room is really dark. I get very little sunlight in there at all, and the trees really suffer. And then when I bring them outside, they take about a month to transition from indoor light to the outdoor light, the sunlight. And so I lose kind of a month in May because it's so dark in the plant room. And then I lose a month in June where the plants are transitioning to the sunlight. So that gives me July, August, and usually half of September, sometimes all of September, for a growing season, which is two, two and a half months, sometimes three months, which isn't very long. So this year I was trying to extend the growing season by bringing the trees out into the greenhouse a month early, having them adapt in that first month, growing all summer, and then keeping them in the greenhouse for the last month of October. So I can now get probably six months of a growing season instead of two to two and a half, which should really improve the health of the trees and, you know, speed up the development. It's fairly early in the morning and the light is just starting to hit the greenhouse. So let's go inside and have a look how the trees have been doing after one month. All right, let's head inside here. I'm in the greenhouse now and I had to wait a while for the camera to warm up and uh, stabilize with the heat and humidity in here. It is, what is the temperature? We have uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit and about 24 degrees Celsius. And we have about 75% humidity. So quite warm and humid in here already. Now I did have to have the heat on last night because we got down to three degrees the night before and last night was around seven, I believe. So still very cool. Um, the heat kind of keeps the trees at a reasonable temperature in here so they don't go dormant in the cold. Let's see how some of the trees have been doing after a month in the greenhouse. I'll start with the Schifflera and up top here, you can see these are the leaves that grew indoors in the plant room and they're a little sunburned and not really doing much. The leaves from last year that were outdoors are still looking nice and green. And if you look down here, you can see all kinds of new growth coming in. It's just really taking off now. So that's good. So, you know, normally I would start to get this kind of growth sort of close to the end of June and now I'm getting it a month early so you know bringing this tree out early and keeping it in the greenhouse certainly helped to get the tree adapted to the outdoors and growing. Up here I've got my tiger bark ficus and it has just taken off like crazy since it got out here so all this up top here is new growth it's done really well. My princess earrings bonsai in the plant room, it had one little shoot. Other than that, it stayed dormant all winter. And you can see on the branches, there's all these big buds that are just swelling up. And it's just starting to push new growth all over the place. So really exciting to see. So that is a tree from a hot, arid type of climate. And it's adapted really well to the greenhouse here. Next, we'll look at my very first bonsai, my ficus microcarpa from a seed and if we come up top here you can see all the new green growth coming out on the tree now it's just starting to explode in growth all over and again if this wasn't out in the greenhouse it never would have been at this stage it would have been just you know in that miserable dark plant room for the last month and when I brought it out here it would be just leaf burning all the leaves you can see some of the older leaves did get a little leaf burned, but not too bad. So yeah, it's definitely a month ahead of schedule 
which is really good. That's what I wanted to do was extend my growing season. The cuttings, the silk floss tree cuttings, are doing really well. The smallest one over there died. The one in the corner, and I didn't expect that one to live. The other ones are pushing out all kinds of new growth on them. You can see the shoots just coming out the top. Especially that middle size one. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new shoots that I can see. But they're all doing well. So the woody cuttings are doing really well. My aloe bonsai is doing really well outside. It's got a lot of new growth just coming in on the tips now. And it's also getting some more aerial roots forming down below. You can see some of the the white on the roots where new roots are coming. So it's doing really well. Most things are doing really well out here. Um, I have no complaints. There was a few nights I had to bring the trees in. There was two nights actually where the temperature got down to minus seven degrees Celsius at night. So well below freezing and I just couldn't risk keeping them in the plant room. So I brought all the trees or couldn't risk keeping them in the greenhouse and I brought all the trees into the plant room for two nights because it was just so cold so basically other than that they've been out here in the greenhouse and if it gets below 10 degrees Celsius at night I put the heater on just for the night only and uh, that's worked really well I'm uh, I don't like using energy if I can't help it but uh, you know to get that extra month of growing for you know I, I would say i've had the heater on for maybe maybe a total of seven nights out of the entire month which is pretty good um yeah i'm happy with that i think that's worthwhile is to have run a heater at night for seven nights to have your trees come out a month early here's another ficus microcarpa the Ficus fancy and you can see it's just covered in new growth up top. This one has probably grown the best of any of the trees out in the greenhouse here. It's just exploded. Ficus plain over here. It's also exploded in growth. Um, all the leaves from indoors are quite leaf burned on it. Even though, you know, it's filtered through the plastic, the sunlight, but, uh, but the new growth is coming in really nicely. My Sarissa back there is doing really well also. I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's covered in flowers and uh, growing with a lot of vigor. The Brazilian rain tree is doing well. My Norfolk Island pines are doing well. All my jades are doing well. You can see this jade got a little sunburned, but the new growth is coming in nice and green and it's got the purple tips on it. Looks really cool. My willow leaf ficus back there, just awesome. This was another one that just, as soon as I brought it out into the, into the uh, greenhouse here, it just exploded in growth. It's just amazing. It's just doing really well. So I'll have to make a video on that soon where I thin out the branch structure and you know pick the branches I wanna keep and get rid of all the crossing ones and the ones that just aren't growing in a good direction. Yeah, so very happy. I think I'll get two months extra growing this year with uh, my greenhouse and when I get my new greenhouse built behind this one. So that'll be very exciting. I couldn't fit all my tropical trees that were in the plant room outside to this small greenhouse. So I had to leave a lot of them in and I've just brought them out recently and they're still in the process of adapting to the outdoors. It usually takes about a month for these trees to adapt to the outdoors, to the sunlight, the temperature, the wind. The tropical trees that I've brought out recently, they have to go in the shade here. If I were to place them out on the bench in full sunlight, it would leaf burn all the foliage and to the extent where it could actually kill the tree. So you have to bring them outdoors, place them in a shady spot that kind of gets filtered sunlight and they gradually get used to the full sun. The new growth that comes in is kind of outdoor hardened off. 
And uh, so it takes that full month to transition from indoors to outdoors. So these trees won't kind of actively start growing until the start of July. So another month from now. The trees in the greenhouse, I can bring them from indoors straight into the greenhouse. And because there's a protective plastic film up there, which filters out some of the sunlight, I don't have to transition them. I can take them from indoors straight into the greenhouse and they don't get a whole lot of leaf burn. They get a little bit, but not too much. After the trees have been outdoors in the shade for about a week or two, I start slowly transitioning them to full sunlight. And you can see over here, I have my hibiscus that's now in full sun and there's no leaf burn. And I just saw another flower bud that I got to pick off it. I'm trying to grow the foliage on here, not flowers. And it just keeps trying to flower. So this tree will also, it'll be going in a bonsai pot and getting a styling soon on an upcoming video. All my hardy trees can go straight from indoors. I keep them in the basement for the coldest months of the winter. They go straight out to the outdoor benches. Any foliage that's on them is hardy already. It's from last year, so it's already used to growing in full sun. Uh, one thing you have to watch is in spring, suddenly the trees become active and they start using a lot more water than they do when they're dormant. And so you'll find as they start to actively grow or wake up for the summer, you'll find the watering requirements go up a lot. You'll have to really watch the watering in spring because they'll go from sitting dormant to suddenly using all that water as the leaves come out and things start growing and you'll have to up your watering. I like to check my soil so I just you know, come in here with my finger, kind of dig down a bit, and you can see this one's dry and needs water. So I haven't done my watering this morning yet. So most things are quite dry. Here's an elm over here where I can see the surface of the soil is still wet. So probably because it doesn't have a whole lot of foliage on this tree. So yeah, you have to go through all your trees and check them for water. There's some moisture down there in the larch forest. The Austrian pine looks fine. It's really waking up all these buds in here. So the needles are starting to extend on the Austrian pine now. A lot of people have said, you know, you can't cut these outer branches until these grow stronger inside, but I think it is fine when I look at these inner buds, how much, you know, how much foliage or needles there are on these inner branches. It's plenty, plenty to support the, this branch and the tree, especially when those come out and they start, you know, using the sunlight. So I don't think there's any problems pruning the outer, outer shape of this tree back 10 to 20% this year. I'm going to do my watering this morning and then I'm heading off to go mountain biking. Here's a look at my mountain bike. It's a Norco Storm. They're designed in Canada. It's got disc brakes, front and rear. It's got Suntour forks at the front, shocks. It's all aluminum and it's really lightweight. It's a fantastic bike. I, uh, I got it at an auction for $140, which was a really good price. It was in really good shape and knew these things are about seven to $800. So. I got a good deal on it and I really like it. It's fantastic on the trails. I'm going to be taking the orchard truck mountain biking today. It's not that far out of town, the trails, and I need to give the truck a run because I got the exhaust manifolds replaced and they want to retorque the bolts on it after I've used the truck for a bit. And other than getting a load of soil for the orchard, I, I haven't really used the truck much at all. So I've got to give it a bit of a run and then I'll get those exhaust bolts retorqued. Say hi, Tony. Hey, how you doing? I'm Tony. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> Beautiful day for bike ride. It is. All right, I'll follow you, Tony. Hopefully I can bike one-handed and hold the camera at the same time. Are we going uphill now? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> it might be hard to do. It's not a real, it's not a real super, super Bumpy roots. See, I'm 
into the... I have to switch to two hands here, Tony. This is too scary. <sighs> That's it for today. We had a fantastic ride through the wilderness. We'll see you back at home. Yeah, take care. Today we have Ross over and we're practicing social distancing. And he's left me a bunch of cuttings over here and I'll show you those. So here they are, all ready to plant. And I'm going to put it in this pot here. And what are these, Ross? These are Peperomia. Um, in particular, they're called Prayer Peperomia. Prayer Peperomia. And they propagate incredibly fast, uh, just in a little bit of perlite and sand. Uh, okay. And they're native to uh, Ecuador, Peru, um, a Mexico place like that and there's 1600 different varieties of peperomia wow. and this is just one of them but I bought one a couple of years ago and propagated it into dozens of plants already so I'm happy to get rid of some of these so okay. I gave some to Nigel <laughs> very nice thank you that'll be awesome well uh, so you, you should let the cut points dry out a bit so I'm going to put it in this dry soil and this not water it for maybe a week or so and uh, that should work quite well. We'll see anyway. So thanks, Ross. You're welcome. <laughs> Hope it works out. You look like a doctor about to <laughs> transplant an organ. The best what method is just make a small little hole okay. in the center of the pot or anywhere in the pot for yeah. that matter. Yeah. Actually, this is very, very loose, you know. It might just push right in. It doesn't need much. Push it halfway down, and it should stay there. Just keep going. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. It, the hole fills in a little bit, but it is looser. It's easier to push it in when there's a bit of a hole there. Yeah. This, this one's a bigger cutting. We want to get it about halfway down. Okay. work it down in there and won't take long. The, the leaves will limp while it's rooting, but once it's rooted, they'll perk up again and you know Then you can works. start giving it a misting and exactly, a yeah. little more water, eh? Okay. Yeah. So just keep going, give it a little bit of space. Yeah. Just like any succulent, really. It's probably a good spacing. Yeah, I guess you don't want them too crowded, do you? Yeah, and and, and uh, I can leave the rest up to you if you like. All right. I'll there's the plenty rest. here to finish. There's probably 10 here. You'll, you won't need that many. Okay. Well, thanks. That's awesome. Excellent. You're welcome. I wonder if I should have filled the pot more with, put more soil in it. Maybe you can and start over. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe I'll raise it up a bit. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, yeah, you just, if you push it in too hard, they'll break. So you just want to okay, ease, ease, it, it ease them down in, yeah. All Especially right. with soil like that. Awesome. Okay. okay. Well, that's cool. Awesome. Great. Sure it'll work out. Yeah. Ross also brought me down some moss. And there's some nice sedum growing in it, too. I think it's a little different of a variety than the ones I have. So that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to keep this well watered in full sun. And we'll see if we can get a nice moss landscape going here. And over here he brought me some wax myrtles. And I've never heard of this tree. Um, it's got a really nice leaf on it. So, I, yeah, he said they use them as hedging down south. So it's a tropical tree. Really excited to uh, get some of these going as bonsai also. I'll have to uh, give a lot of them away. There's way too many in here for me. And I'll have to pot them up into uh, maybe some smaller bonsai pots and do a bit of root pruning and kind of start the bonsai process on them. That'll be exciting to see how these wax myrtles develop. I planted the peperomas, I think that's how you say it, and they're down on the floor of the greenhouse here. And I haven't watered them. They, uh, the only watering they'll get is the humidity from the air in the greenhouse, which is quite high. And that should, they should develop nicely down there. It's quite, it's bright, but it's shady. And it's fairly cool down there. It's not hot like up on top of the benches here. So I think they'll 
do really well down there. We'll see anyway. If they uh, start looking a little rough, well, I'll move them to a different location. It's the end of another busy day. Thanks for joining me today in the Bonsai Zone.